it, but I don't. No, so this runs, uh, there's a whole world of Transformers music videos, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> and so, like, sound wave dancing gets you lots of results. Yeah, way too many. Um, a couple of other fun options, uh, one that we also talked about the other night, the Motorola Atrix was a relatively expensive phone with an incredibly com comparably expensive accessory called the Atrix Laptop. The lap duck. Uh, when it came out, it cost $400. It's basically like a tiny laptop that you stick your phone in to make your phone into a laptop. It's a keyboard with a monitor that pops up. Oh, it's like forty dollars on eBay, and it has an HDMI port, and so you plug your tie into it. You got a tiny little pie laptop. And a battery. And a battery. Uh, you do need a mystical unicorn of a connector uh, that, if I recall correctly, is a micro male HDMI to female regular HDMI. Kind of crazy. Uh, this is a project called the Kindleberry Pie, which even if you do not want to turn your ancient Kindle into a Raspberry Pi screen. You should totally, at the end, I have a link to the slides if that would help you in your picture. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're welcome to, but you can also download all of them. You should go to that link and read that guy's directions about how to make this and watch him insult you. It's kind of fun reading. Uh, he says you should have an extra Kindle because you're going to work up the one that you're doing this with, and you're probably too stupid to be doing this anyway, so I'm not sure why you're reading the directions. You don't know what the command line is, why are you still here? I, like, <laughs> it's fun reading. Oh, like touchscreen. Yeah, so my second thing was, is, hey, touchscreens, I put that DSi connector will work for me because I had forgotten already that I learned that it didn't. Um, uh, so the next step was, that, okay, I'm going to make touchscreen work. So I went out and looked at touchscreens that were well supported in Linux, figuring I would have a good amount of success with that. And so I went and got myself a Nemo 720. There's a lot of people that have used that touchscreen in various other Linux projects. Uh, now, the biggest problem with the Mimo 720 is that it is a display link device. Now, if you know what display link means, it basically is all the devices that don't connect directly to a VGA or an HDMI input. They connect entirely over USB, they're powered over USB, they're driven through USB. The idea was that you could add a second monitor to a laptop by plugging simply into the USB while that second monitor. Uh, but display link. Uh, isn't supported in the stock Raspberry Pi kernel, so you're going to have to recompile your kernel to enable the modules necessary for display link. The other big problem is that with Pi works is that it does hardware accelerated video out the ports that it has in hardware, but this doesn't magically pass over to a display link device. So the display link device will run entirely unaccelerated. So it is all the speed and technology that you remember from the 2D card that came in your machine in 1999 on your display link passing across the USB 2 bus. It is not fast. It is not efficient. You will go, ah, oh, this thing is hideous. So no HD video. Absolutely not. So uh, probably it's not great for things like OpenELEC or RasBMC because they're not going to be supporting this natively. You're not going to get that acceleration. Uh, what you're going to have to do if you want to do a touchscreen that is supporting acceleration, you're going to have to find one that has uh, input from one of the output hardware sources, so either the HDMI source or the composite video. So you mentioned I have doing a few of those now, aren't they? Hmm? I think Adafruit has a few of those, haven't they? Adafruit is doing a lot of screens. I don't know that they're doing touch screens. Okay. They have yeah. one. Yeah, the other option is yeah. you can get an overlay, uh, which is basically a uh, capacitive sheet of plastic that you stick on top of an existing screen, and then you can wire that overlay into uh, the Pi and tell it, I'm a touch screen now, and then it's a touch screen. Adafruit's throwing out new products like every day. Every time I go on that site, I'm like, where was this a year ago? It's exactly what I needed. That was a whole chapter in our book. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you said I have to build a kernel. That sounds like scary words. Yeah, it's building kernel scary. Now, so uh, the news around the kernel is that the changes necessary to run the Raspberry Pi are not yet in the upstream kernel. There's a lot of work to get that merged up. Some of it is merged, but not all of it is merged. So they've maintained a separate branch on GitHub, which is having their, it's the base Linux kernel plus their changes attached to it. Uh, for a while it was stuck at 3.227, then there was a 3.6 branch, and lately as more of their changes have merged into upstream and it's become easier to maintain for them, they've been able to keep a running uh, matching tree. So if you go there now, you'll get like a 3.12 or something like that kernel that's stable for them. Uh, so you check out from GitHub, which is your git clone command, uh, or you download the source from uh, their website, and then you uh, run the make Mr. Proper command, and then... Uh, Who's the biggest Linux nerd in the room? He is. All right, why does it make Mr. Proper? What's why it called? Call that? Why is the first step in the kernel process to make Mr. Proper? No. Uh, no I have does anyone know? Can, yes, do you know? Makes. Uh, I believe the story was that it's the European or Finnish or something name for Mr. Clean. Bam! You that are. is the first person we have ever given this talk to. Yeah. I, I don't know. 
in the United States, and in he, Europe. Yeah. Everyone was like, duh. No, they were like confused because they don't know who Mr. Clean is. They have no idea who this is. Yeah, so Mr. Mr. Proper is, is the uh, European, uh, Finnish specifically, version of Mr. Clean. So when you really need to clean, Mr. Clean. So you got an SD card, you got a monitor now, what are you going to do with it? You need a distro. So we work for Red Hat and more specifically on Fedora and thus have somewhat of a preference for Pydora, which is the version of Fedora optimized for the Pi. That said, you should choose the distro that is right for whatever it is that you intend to do. So the best example is, if you do intend to set up XBMC, which is a great first project, you should use RASBMC because that is what it is for. The only exception is, if you would like to build a costume in which you think that you would like to show people how great Pydora is, you might have to make things run on Pydora. Uh, if you do not like any of these options, there are quite a few others, and this is a teeny tiny fraction of the massive list of distros. And every time we give this talk, somebody's like, none of these work for me, I want to make my own distro. And I'm like, really? Seriously? None of this. None of this works for you at all. Uh, this is just, uh, this is more words than I ever put on a slide, I'm really sorry, like you don't have to read all those, but uh, it's just a little bit about Pydora, and I have to tell you my favorite feature, which is uh, if you have a headless project, you never ever want to plug a monitor in, so you don't even have to listen to the last 10 minutes of what we said. You can put a little file on your SD card before you start with Pydora, and when you boot it up for the first time, it will link the IP address out through the LEDs and read it through the speakers in a delightful British accent. <laughs> I suggested, what's that? Oh, I suggested this to someone at the BOF the other night who said that he wanted to try a bunch of different distros. This is what that was intended for. Noobs, new out-of-box software. You can download it from the Raspberry Pi site. It is the first thing they suggest you download. And so at first boot, you see this screen and you pick which one of these things you would like to try out and it sets it up for you. And then when you completely screw up your project because you type something stupid in the command line or you just want to try something else, you hold down shift to boot, you get the screen again, you get to start over and you don't have to flash your card again. Is the person who asked this question the other night here? No, he was shell-shocked by the <laughs> He was traumatized and ran away. So I thought this sounded like a really good idea. Let's put Android on the Raspberry Pi, right? No, this is a really bad idea and I'm going to save you all a week of your life. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, it, there is a build, there's a project called Razdroid, if you Google R-A-Z Droid, Razdroid is the name of the project, they have a channel on IRC where nobody ever talks because the project's pretty much dead, but they have one wiki page with a build that more or less works and some instructions that aren't very good, and that's about it. And so, you find the instructions for a while, you set up the image that they already have, you go, wow, this is slower than molasses and July. <coughs> Cyanogen 9 is unusable, like it's 7.2, it's slow, it's sad, it's the saddest thing. I'm not my, it's unaccelerated. It's off. It takes you like 10 minutes to move the mouse across the screen, and I would like to pretend that that's an exaggeration. So, now you need to install it. You can go to the command line, which is totally fun, and I imagine a lot of you here know how to do that. This, even if you don't use Fedora, is a handy dandy tool. You pick uh, your image, and you pick your SD card, and you click install, and magic happens. Uh, there is RPI SD card builder for the Mac. We don't know what the Windows thing is, but I hear some people do, so if that's you, you're on your own. I'm sorry, we're not going to do No, this is one of those houses. Oh, yeah. There might be Windows. I didn't mean to be uninclusive, I hope. Yeah. So one of, the, one of my favorite reviews of our book on Amazon says, uh, it's not friendly to people who can't use Linux. And I'm like, well, what were you going to run on the Pi? I don't, like, I can't help you. Or you can just buy a preloaded SD card. Uh, the Pi Hat Element 14 Adafruit, just about everybody sells SD cards preloaded. It's not that hard to put it on yourself, but if you need to buy an SD card because you don't have 47 in a drawer for your camera, that is an option. So let's talk about power, five volts of power. So the Pi really wants five volts at one end at power. If you mess with either of those variables, the Pi will start to get unhappy. And when the Pi gets unhappy, it gets like a toddler on sugar and just sort of runs around bashing things until it falls over and passes out and dies. 99% <laughs> of the issues that people report on the Raspberry Pi forums of my thing doesn't work right, why isn't it working right, are tied directly to power issues. Now, USB devices come in two types. You've got high power and low power. All of the ports on the Pi are low power ports. Most of the devices that you buy are high power devices. You 
you can see the inherent disconnect between these two worlds. Now, some devices that are high power are tolerant in the middle and will behave sort of properly. Fancy keyboards fall into the I don't behave properly, so you'd be typing away on your nice keyboard that you don't think is too expensive because you only paid $10 for it at Best Buy and it seems like a good keyboard and then all of a sudden it just refuses to accept the T key. And you're like, why is this not working with the Pi? This keyboard is crap. No, it's the voltage difference between the low power device and the high power keyboard that's trying to do this operation. Wireless devices are all high power. They are very intolerant of low power ports. So when you plug your little wireless dongle into there, and it just randomly stops working, it stops passing bits. This is a very common problem with Raspberry Pis. The solution to this is to put a power hub between the two to bridge that gap. Now, iPhones, the proprietary connectors are fun for you and your iPhones, but they're going to be worthless for the body. You just take them and burn them. If you have an Android phone, you already have a thousand chargers that power your Pi. Well, sort of. Most of them. Here's the caveat with the phone charger that came with your Android. It's probably crap. Because your phone doesn't require clean 5 volt 1 amp to charge its battery. And they know this, so they're not going to give you a nice free charger that has this guaranteed reliable power because it just means that your battery will charge faster and no one will, it will charge slower rather, and no one will care. The Pi just goes crazy because it's not a battery, it's an actual computing object. So, what you probably want to do is you want to go out and get a nice high-grade, reliable, tested, proven 5 volt 1 amp, or a little more in each direction. Again, if you, if you get a 1.1, it's going to be fine, or you go to a little bit less, you'll be fine. It's, it's, but it will save you a lot of heartburn later on in, in the process if you know you're starting with clean, regulated, tested power. I had a lot of luck. I got two of them. One, one to power the Pi and one to be my USB hub. Uh, D-Links that have the phone charge ports. The phone charge ports are perfect for powering the Pi, but of course then if you plug it in, you can't use yeah. that one. So, <laughs> you have to have a pair of them. Yeah. One to power the Pi and one so, to power the Pi. So, if you're looking for one, Adafruit has uh, a great one that's not terribly expensive. And the bonus part about it is that if you want to plug your Android phone into that one, your, your battery will charge much faster. Uh, so, put, so put a power brick on your shopping list. No? Did you mention C6? Did I? No, I didn't. So, uh, I don't have a Pi handy to... Well, no, I do. I do have a Pi handy. It's kind of dangling right now. This was attached to the board earlier. Like, nope, this way. So, this little thing right above the power outlet, that is not a thumb holder that you hold to shove your power plug into, which is what everybody does the first time they get their Pi. They hold down that little that little cylinder plug in, cylinder came up. It's called C6, and that's what you have to Google to replace it. It will still work without it, but should you decide to replace it, the black stripe goes to the outside. It's not a tragedy, but uh, you, should, you should not break it up. Man, notice your Pi has no power switch, like most devices do. If you would like to add one, your newer Pi's, if you bought it like the day of launch, your old Pi's don't have this. Your newer ones right behind C6 there have these two little holes. You put two pins in there, short them out, and you have an on-off switch. So, if you have power problems, it may mean that you have power problems and you would like to test the voltage. Those little letters on your board are not just there because somebody spilled some letters on the board. We have uh, <laughs> TP1 is test point one, TP2 is test point two. If you plug in all the peripherals for your project, set your voltmeter's range to 20 volts, touch the red to TP1 and the black to TP2, it needs to be at least 4.8. You have about a quarter point. <laughs> Variance that you can get out of there. And when it's testing at 4.3 and you're wondering why things aren't working right? That's, That's why. Right. Your power sucks. There is still one polyfuse left uh, on the back of the Pi, and you can test that as well. It's on the back side of TP2. It looks like that. Uh, it's the part of F3 that's labeled facing the SD card. So this time, instead of everything plugged in, take it all out, touch one of the leads to TP2 and the other to where it's marked F3 on the SD card side, and that'll tell you the voltage coming from the fuse. Um, if you switch, or that tells you the voltage from the fuse. If you touch the other side, it tells you the voltage coming in. And those are self-healing, but only to a point. Front of your board has some handy-dandy LEDs that actually tell you useful information. I have looked up this table about a thousand times. What's happening? What is missing? This is, this is also on elinux.org, the handiest site in the world. 
said, we could cram this in an old Game Boy case. It turns out that it's harder than I thought, but it's still a good idea. The biggest problem is that uh, that connector off the side, there is no room for the Game Boy case for that thing, so I'm still working on that part. It would work better if I had a different screen. Um, but this is an excellent example of how even if you don't know what the heck you're doing, it's probably going to work out anyway. We bought this little two and a half inch TFT screen from Adafruit. It had no instructions, no data sheet. Because 
Pizza Hut always used to have those where you sit there and it flips back and forth with the players. And I'm like, holy crap, Ikea and a pie? We got one of these things. The internet already did it like 47 times. Simpsons did it. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to think of something else. And uh, we had, a, we both work for Red Hat and there's an all company mailing list. And somebody sent out a message one day. Oh, actually, it was only our local list. It was the local area list. He said, does anybody have a Geiger counter I can borrow? No context. <laughs> and it was a guy I knew, so I messaged him on IRC, and I was like, why do you want the guy your counter? And he replied, can you make me one with a raspberry pie? And I thought, ha ha, that's funny. <laughs> Super Scratch Programming Adventure, which is no doubt extra awesome for the children of the people here. Uh, the way it's designed, it looks like this. The left side is a comic book, and in each section of the comic book, something horrible happens to the cat. The cat is the mascot of Scratch. Scratch teaches kids programming in these little puzzle blocks. And so you fit the puzzle blocks together, and it makes you program. Gentlemen, after my own heart, figured out a way to attach a raspberry pie. 